orientation and gender identity are topics that rarely come up in the workplace. That's probably because being lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and or queer still isn't totally accepted in our society. So people who identify as such might want to keep that side of their identity to themselves. But it can be really tough to come to work every day and feel like you have to hide something you feel is core to who you are. The challenge then is, how do we make sure every member of this community is included without requiring them to individually advocate for themselves on a daily basis? With the exception of Slack, which recently reported a workforce that is 13% LGBTQ worldwide, there's rarely any statistics of how many people are employed at any given company. And if there is, there's usually no information whatsoever about what it's actually like for LGBTQ people working at those companies. That said, the Human Rights Campaign Corporate Equality Index recently gave out perfect scores to 21 tech companies, including Facebook, Alphabet, Apple, and Twitter. The companies were judged on whether their policies prohibit discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. To help us better understand the state of LGBTQ people in the workplace, we have Lesbians Who Tech CEO, Leanne Pittsburgh. Lesbians Who Tech is an organization geared toward increasing the visibility of lesbian and queer women in the tech industry. Founded by Leanne Pittsford, Lesbians Who Tech hosts an annual summit in San Francisco. The summit has featured prominent speakers and judges like White House CTO Megan Smith, Rico's Kara Swisher, and allies like Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff and Alexis O'Hannon of Reddit. Next week, Lesbians Who Tech is holding its third annual summit at the historic Castro Theater with a specific focus on space and hardware. Hey, Leanne, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Of course. So what are some of the challenges <clears throat> that LGBTQ people face in the workplace? I think there's a few things that LGBTQ people face in the workplace. I mean, first of all, our experience is different, right? When you think about, um, we just you know, recently won the right and freedom to marry right. the person we love, but that's new. Um, and then there's all the sort of other things that I think are less talked about, but you know, everything from having a family, right? And we actually, don't have any of the data on how LGBT people in the workplace are really being impacted because it's a little bit of an HR issue. It's you right. know, been something that's private for people. Um, but I think that's the next frontier, sort of getting the data and then assessing where people are. Um, we know that women and, and people of color are underrepresented. We have all of that data. We have data. that data, we right. That data. And, right, so why, so you, you mentioned that it's a bit of an HR issue, but um, over at Slack, they, they have released their, um, the percentage of LGBTQ people <coughs> at that company, but why do you think we're not really seeing? Yeah, no, I'm really, I'm really excited they did that. I think, um, I don't know this for sure, but my assumption is that they're a new company and they're a startup. And I think the laws and, and sort of the societal culture around it is shifting. Mm -hmm. And so I think for bigger companies, companies that have had policies in the past, they're sort of figuring out how, how to shift that. But it should be all opt-in data, right? No one should force you to right. put it. It and should I be private. They are surveys yeah, so, so it's just sort of you know a hiring thing, right? You don't necessarily, if you are asked the question, do you feel comfortable, even if it is private, um, right. and not having total trust that that data will be used appropriately. Right. You and I have both been using some acronyms. Um, yeah. I, I use LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you just use LGBT. Yeah. What's the most, like, what's what's the best acronym, the one that's most inclusive? Yeah, mm -hmm. I should use LB, LGBTQ. Okay. Um, I, I get a little, sometimes I go back and forth, but we should all use LGBTQ. What advice do you have for for workplaces that would like to be more inclusive and welcoming? of LGBTQ people? Yeah, I think I think a few things. I think the first part is just listening and asking questions. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, I obviously talk to a lot of HR people, a lot of uh, people in recruiting, and one of the things they're thinking about is also, you know, it's recruiting and employee happiness, retention. Right. And so, you know, oftentimes they don't start a community until there's one LGBTQ person who raises their hand. Right. But oftentimes they actually don't feel comfortable to do that. I right. Why. Yeah. yeah. So they're not they're not <laughs> sure. And right. and so I sort of say to them, I was like, look, you know, um, participating with us, with other LGBTQ organizations, sort of putting it out there first. You know, it's different than I think. Um, ethnicity and gender, you know, because it is a little more personal. And so putting it out there saying, hey, we're, we are a company that supports LGBTQ people and we want to make sure you feel comfortable um, is the first step. I think there's, you know, a lot of conversations and, and even though a company is supportive of, of policy in general, doesn't mean all of their employees are, you know, educated in these types of issues, which is, which is the part I think that, you know, we really have to focus on always. 
I know that there's a lot of really great tech that people are working on who participate in Lesbians Who Tech. Can you tell me about some of that? Yeah, it's been really interesting. When I first started this, people were afraid that we wouldn't have, you know, they're like, don't do too many conferences. There's only so many lesbians in tech. And so <laughs> that part's been interesting. And I think why we've had so much growth is that we focus on the technology first. And so our conference and our speakers are really talking about all the amazing tech that they're working on. And they just happen to be LGBTQ women, LGBTQ women of color. Um, we have someone that's uh, helping us get to Mars in 2020. Cool. We have someone who's working on reusable spaceships for SpaceX. We have the head of design from Watson. So that's, and we have someone from Genentech who's literally trying to help us cure cancer. Wow, that's, that's awesome. And uh, will, they, will they be at the conference coming up? Yep. Cool. Great. Well, can't wait for that. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Bullish airs every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, and you can find it here on TechCrunch.com.